Hello Church, this is John chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognise him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of the unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son, John testified about him when he shouted to the crowd, This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another. The law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the unique one who is himself God is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, Who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well then, who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we are expecting? No. Then who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am a voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way for the Lord's coming. Then the Pharisees who had been sent asked him, if you aren't the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptise? John told them, I baptise with water. But right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognise. Though his ministry follows mine, I am not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. This encounter took place in Bethany, an area east of the Jordan River, where John was baptising. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, he is the one I was talking about when I said... A man is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I did not recognise him as the Messiah, but I have been baptising with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptise with water, he told me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to a place where he was staying and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, We found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, 
Come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth? exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus asked him, Do you believe this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Wow, this chapter is rich and it is weighty. I'd love to go really in depth on it with you, but that would take quite some time. The opening verses deliberately use the language of Genesis 1 to introduce the reader to the theme of the gospel. Jesus is the Son of God and is God. Breathe that in a moment. The one who is outside of time, the uncreated one who existed before all things, the one whom all things were made, became a human being and dwelt among us. That blows my mind and reminds me of my smallness in that God is God and I am not. The first section of this chapter reminds us that Jesus is the source of all life and that he is the light. Darkness can never extinguish that light. That should fill us with hope that however dark our circumstances might seem, his light in us can never be put out. I wonder where you need to see more of his light right now. Perhaps a difficult relationship, a precarious job situation, fragile health, mental or physical. Take the time today to reread those words from verse 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. The chapter then explores John the Baptist's relationship towards Jesus. John knew that he wasn't the light. He knew his job was to call people to repentance, to prepare the way for Jesus' light to shine in all its glory. Where are you being called to prepare the way for God's kingdom to come? What are you doing about it? I know I've been called to my workplace to show others more of who Jesus really is and to point others to him. So I pray the Lord's Prayer on arrival at school each morning. I pray in the corridors, in the classrooms. I take the opportunities to speak of my faith when they arise and I seek to love others well through kindness, gentleness, grace and understanding. What can you do today to prepare the way for Jesus? John then records Jesus meeting and calling some of his disciples. What fascinates me about this account is the way Jesus just speaks straight to identity. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. Peter means rock, and in Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said that he will be the rock on which the church will be built. He says about Nathanael, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. I wonder what Jesus would say about you and your true identity in him. Why don't you ask him now? Let's pray. Jesus, we are so humbled that you came as a human and dwelt among us. We are so awestruck and captivated by you because you are God. And yet you understand our humanness and you have so much compassion for us. Thank you that your light can never be extinguished, and we ask you to show us your light in the difficult situations we are facing. Help us to prepare the way for you and your kingdom in the places and spaces we inhabit, and open our ears and our hearts to hear you speak to our true identity today. Amen.